The best studies on malnutrition were not conducted on teenagers with anorexia nervosa or bulimia nervosa. They were conducted on young men who were conscientious objectors and didn't want to fight in Korea. And these young men were voluntarily starved on, anyone want to guess how many calories they were starved on for six months in order to look like this? Anyone? 500. They were starved on 1,600 calories a day. 1,600 calories is semi-starvation for a young man. And the interesting thing is that over time, they developed all the features you're going to hear about. Low heart rates, low blood pressures, um, vital sign instability. But they also obsessed about food. They also collected recipes. One became bulimic, and one actually committed suicide. So I would put it to you that if any of us in this room were obsessional enough to be able to starve for that period of time, we might also develop many of the features that we see in our patients. So what are the warning signs if you're concerned? Firstly, it's the preoccupation with shape and weight. If you notice that your child is reading labels, cooking and baking for others, don't be fooled, especially if they don't eat the food. Try and monitor what websites they're visiting. If they're visiting pro-eating disorder websites, you, there is reason for concern. They may refuse to eat certain foods they previously loved, and often under the pretext of it being healthy, or I want to become a vegetarian. Comments about feeling fat, and we should be careful about our own comments about how we feel. Food rituals, playing with the food, moving the food to one side, chewing the food a certain number of times in a certain way, not touch, allowing foods to touch. Excuses, saying, well, I'm not going to have dinner. I had dinner on the way home. Exercising excessively. I've had a number of patients who get up in the middle of the night in order to run. And obviously, loss of weight, which is not always that easy to see because people hide the fact that they've lost weight. So this may be obvious when your child comes back from college over the summer, for example. The warning signs for bulimia are firstly fluctuations in weight, up and down, disappearing to the bathroom after meals, taking long showers, frequent showers, feeling tired, lethargic, and dizzy, mood swings, Periods when they eat a lot, periods when they fast a lot. Hiding food, smell of vomit as you walk into the bathroom after they've been there. And you may find laxatives, diuretics, or also candy wrappers hidden in drawers. I know most of the people in this room are not physicians, but there are some things that you may be able to see just by looking at your child or your friend. Look at the hands. This is my hand on your right. This is the hand of a young girl with anorexia nervosa, that yellow color secondary to keratinemia. In those who vomit, this is called Russell sign, caused by self-induced vomiting. Look on the dominant hand if you suspect your child may be having an eating disorder. The feet are cold and blue, always complaining of being cold. They may develop hair on the side of their face or their chest to keep warm. And in someone who's binging and purging, they may have enlargement of these glands called the parotid. That might be a sign that you may, be no you may notice. So what should you do if you suspect that your child has an eating disorder? I think the first thing to do is to go and see your pediatrician and discuss the concerns with your doctor. Um, in the case of an adult, go and see an internist. Do the same. Get your child examined. The pediatrician undresses your child, gets height and weight, and can get some assessment of what's going on. And know the resources in your community. If you live in this area, you are very fortunate because we have one of the best eating disorders programs in the country. There's a lot of expertise here, and there are some brochures outside that can give you more information about that. So my take-home messages are firstly, that eating disorders are prevalent. They're very common in the adolescent and young adult age group. High achieving perfectionistic girls are particularly at risk, and they may be our sons, our daughters, 
Are sons too are at risk if they have the same features? These conditions are associated with serious medical and also psychological sequelae. And really, early intervention is associated with better outcomes, so please get help. If you have any concerns, please contact your pediatrician. Thank you.